Mata-prantaram-nanyat-inchirasti-dhananjaya-mahi-sarvam-idam-prautam-sitre-mani-gana-iha-put-forward-mata-bhyan-mi Parataram, superior, na, not, anyat, kinchit, anything else, asti, there is, ananjaya, who conquered wealth, mai, in me, sarvam, all that be, idam, which we see. Putram is strong. Sutra on a thread. Mai on a heart. Pearls. Eva like. Translation purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. No conqueror of wealth, there's no truth superior to me. Everything rests upon me as pearls are strung on a thread. Please repeat. O conqueror of wealth, there is no truth superior to me. Everything rests upon me as pearls are strung on a thread. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. There is a common controversy over whether the Supreme Absolute Truth is personal or impersonal. As far as Bhagavad Gita is concerned, the Absolute Truth is the personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, and this is confirmed in every step. In this verse, in particular, it is stressed the Absolute Truth is a person, that the personality of Godhead is the Supreme Absolute Truth, is also the affirmation of the Brahma Samhita, Ishvara Parma Krishna Satsarananda Vigra. That is the Supreme Absolute Truth, personally God, Lord Krishna, who is the primeval Lord, the reservoir of all pleasure, Govinda, and the eternal form of complete bliss and knowledge. These authorities leave no doubt that the Supreme Truth is the Supreme Person, the cause of all causes. The impersonalists argue on the strength of the Vedic version given in the Svetasvatar Upanishad, Toyad Uttarataram Tad Arupam An Mayami Mayam Ya Aitad Vidur Amritas Tad Bhavanti Ate Tare Dukam eva piyanti. In the material world, Brahma, the primeval living entity within the universe, is understood to be the supreme among the demigods, human beings, and lower animals. But beyond Brahma, there is the transcendence, who has no material form and is free from all material contamination. Anyone who can know him also becomes transcendental. But those who do not know him suffer the miseries of the material world. The impersonal that put more stress are the word arupam. But this arupam is not impersonal. It indicates the transcendental form of eternity, bliss, and knowledge as described in the Brahma Samhita, quoted above. Other verses of the Svetava Upanishad substantiate this as follows. I know that the Supreme Personality of God, who is transcendental to all material conception of darkness, only he who knows him can transcend the bonds of birth and death. There is no way for liberation other than this knowledge of that Supreme Person. 
There's no truth superior to that supreme person because he is the supermost. He's smaller than the smallest. He's greater than the greatest. He's situated as a silent tree and he illuminates the transcendental sky as a tree sprouts his roots. He spreads his ex extensive energies. From this ver these verses, one concludes that the Supreme Absolute Truth is the Supreme Person of Godhead, who is all pervasive by his multi energies, both material and spiritual. Altogether, Omagana, Tiramdasya, Jananjana, Sakaya, Sakshuri Mitam Jena, Tasma, Shigur Venama, Sri Jaitanya Manobistam, Sapitam Yena Bhutale, Swayam Rupa Kadamayam, Danti Swapadanti Kam, Vandayam Shigura, Shiata Parakamalam, Shigurun Vaishnavam Shta, Sri Rupam Sadhata Saigana Ragana Tam Tam Sajivam, Sadvaitam Sabhutam Vrijna Zaitam, Krishna Shaitanya Devam, Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sagana Laita, Sri Vishakam Bhattam Cha, He Krishna Karuna Sindhu, Nandu Jagapade, Gopisha Gopikanta Rara Kanta Nostite, Tapta Kanchana Gorangi, Hare Vindavanishwari, Vishabhanu Sute Devi, Manamani Hari Priye, Panchakopitri Vyascha, Kripa Sindhu Vyavacha, Anam Bhavnevyo, Vaishnavyo Namonamaha, Sri Krishna Shaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Adrita Gradar, Sri Vasari Gaur Bhaktivinoda, Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Hare Hare Rama Hare Rama Translation once again <clears throat> O conqueror of wealth there's no truth superior to me everything rests upon me as pearls are strung on a thread So this continuation of this chapter, Knowledge of the Absolute. So this uh, section is verses one through seven. It's talking about knowing Krishna in full by hearing about him. And that this verse is a very beautiful verse and we all have our favorite verses. Well, this is my, one of my favorite verses for some reason or another. It says that everything is resting upon me as pearls are strung on a thread. So, uh, it said <coughs> that when you have pearls strung on a thread, you can't see the thread. In the same way, uh, to know God uh, is not uh, available to everyone. Parimanjana Tarita Bhakti Vilochanena. Brahma Samhita says you have to have eyes tinged with the salve of love. The same way, the Holy Dham, the name, Krishna's name, form, qualities, pastimes, is Dham, Brindama Dham. We can't see it with these material eyes because uh, we're still contaminated by the modes of material nature. And there's a curtain, it's called Bodha Maya, which uh, covers our vision. So when we come to Vrindavan, um, we can feel 
that there's some spiritual, it's a spiritual place, spiritual atmosphere. And it's different from any other place. But we can't really see the real Vrindam, Chintamani, Prakamashu, Kapaviksha. In Vrindavan, every step is a dance, every word is a song, every, everything is spiritual. The gopis are worried about Krishna going to the forest and they will hurt his feet from the stones and thorns because his feet are so tender that if you touch his feet, it, just by touching the bottom of his feet, it, it turns red. But in Golok Vrindavan, there are no pebbles. The ground is like foam and there are no thorns. The thorns are like rubber. So there's no real chance that Krishna can hurt his feet. But they're thinking this way out of their sentiment and uh, love for Krishna. So in this way, we can't really uh, understand the Dham as it is until we're free from all material contamination. So here, Prabhupada says, there's a debate between the personal conception and impersonal conception. So the uh, <coughs> the idea that Krishna is a person is confirmed in uh, in this verse of Bhagavad Gita. It's also confirmed in the first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. Jan Maria Shayataha Ayad Itartishu Abhyana Sarat Tene Brahma Ridari Kavaye Vyanti Yat Sriha Tejo Vari Midam Yata Vinayo Yatra Sri Sago Mimsha Damna Sena Sada Nirastaku Kam Sajam Param Dimahi O my Lord Sri Krishna, O Son of Asada, O pervading personal Godhead. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. <clears throat> he is the absolute truth and the primal cause of all causes of the creation, maintenance, creation, substance, and destruction of the material universe. He is directly and indirectly <clears throat> conscious of all manifestation. He is independent because there is no one other than him other cause beyond him is only he is only first imported the Vedic knowledge into the heart of Brahmaji, the original being, and by him even great Satan demigods are placed in delusion. Also Chaitanya Chartamrita states Yada Advaitam Brahmo Pashad Vashida Tad Api Asya Anu Baha Yada Advani Purusha Iti So Sun Samsha Viva Va. What the Upancha describes the impersonal Brahman is the effulgence of his body. Lord is known as the Super Soul, is but the localized plenary portion. He is the Supreme Personality God at Krishna Himself, full with six options. He is the Absolute Truth. No other truth is greater or equal to Him. So in the 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, it says the foolish living entities who can't understand how they accept His body on three modes of material nature, but one who has eyes, chakshush, Ganasakshus can see all this. The endeavoring transcendentals can see all this clearly, but those whose minds are not developed and not engaged in self realization cannot see what is taking place, even if they try to. So it says if the scientists can count all the atoms in the universe, can count all the stars in the sky, can count all the snowflakes in the snowfall, still they can't come to a I understand anything about the supreme qualities, forms, or 
the Supreme Person or the Godhead because their mind is not developed and they're not engaged in self-realization. So they can do so much research work and come up with so many different theories and uh, speculations, but uh, they can't come to the real understanding which is given in Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, and all of Prabhupada's books. Even Ishu Panishad. So in this verse, it says, Anu, it's quoting from the uh, Upanishad, and Anu Rupam means he has no form. But in the Ishu Panishad, there's also a verse that is similar to this one. <coughs> and that says, <coughs> that the Lord, uh, such a person must actually know the greatest of all, the person I got it, who's unembodied, omniscient, beyond reproach, without vain, pure, uncontaminated, the self-sufficient philosopher has been filling everyone's desire since time immemorial. So, Krishna has, has a body, Satchirananda, Anurupam, means he has no material form, but he has a spiritual form. Ishvara Parama Krishna Satyananda Vigraha Nandiyade Govindam Sarva Karanam. So when Lord Chaitanya was traveling, Lord Chaitanya took sannyas when he was 24 years old, and they went to Jagannath Puri on the request of his mother. But for the first six years, um, he he went to South India and toured South India. And when he was in South India, he found the Brahma Samhita and he found Krishna Karnamrita. In those days, they didn't have printing presses, they didn't have computer printouts, and so they had the books copied and brought them back with them when he went back to Jagannath Puri to give to his associates. So he considered the Brahma Samhita one of the most uh, an important uh, authority on the uh, personality Godhead. Agni yasa saklan riviti manti pasyanti panti kalyanti chiranjiganti nanyu chinmaya tsaduja vigrahasya govinda maripusha tamaham bhajami. I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, whose transcendental form is full of bliss, truth, substantiality, and thus full the most dazzling splendor. Each of the limbs of that transcendental figure possesses in himself the full-fledged function of all the organs, internally sees, maintains, and manifests the infinite universes, both spiritual and mundane. So Krishna's form is not like our form. We have eyes, ears, nose, tongue, but we can only uh, smell, hear, see with those things. But Krishna can hear with his tongue, can eat with his ears, can see with, it, uh, see with his mouth, and he can do anything with any of his different bodily parts. So, and also it says, Advaitam achyutam anandimant anandim anantarupam Adya Purana Purusham Nava Yominamcha Vedeshu Dulabama Dulabama Atma Bhakto Govinda Haripusha Tamaha Madami. I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, who is inaccessible to the Vedas, but obtainable by pure unalloyed devotion of the soul, who is without a second, who is not subject to decay, who is without a beginning, whose form is endless, and who is the, is the beginning and the eternal Purusha. Yet he is a person possessing the beauty of blooming youth. So in this way, uh, Srila Prabhupada came to America with his Bhagavatam. Never say she shouldn't be body. Uh, we, we 
offer prayer to Prabhupada that he's removed this impersonal voidism. So, uh, Prabhupada went to one function, the etc., where different people were speaking. And Prabhupada had to listen to all these nonsense philosophies. He spoke last. At another function, I don't know if it's the same place, Prabhupada spoke, then somebody was speaking. And in the middle of his spe speech, middle of his uh, discourse, Prabhupada told the, the devotees to start kirtan. Because Prabhupada couldn't stand to hear Mayavadi philosophy, which is, makes no sense and uh, is uh, simply a disturbance. Uh, anything that doesn't uh, agree with the Shastra is simply a disturbance to society. So Prabhupada cut the man off and had him do kirtan just to, so he wouldn't have to listen to Mayavadi philosophy. And Lord Chaitanya says, if you hear Mayavadi philosophy, then you're doomed. So, uh, there's no doubt about it that even in the Bible it says man is created in the image of God. So, if we have a form, we have an image, so then how can God not have an image? But in the Muslim religion they say God is Naraka, formless. In the other religions, either they, don't, they may have some conception, they don't have any clear conception about God. And when you try to mention, if they're not submissive, mention the fact that God is a person, they get angry and they don't want to hear about it, they don't want to even talk about it. And, but uh, it's not very logical that we, everyone had a father, and his father had a, your father had a father, and his father had a father. So when you trace back the original father, that's Krishna. Krishna is the original father, the original person. Govinda Mahari Pushatamaha Bajami. So there's no, logically, it doesn't make sense that God cannot be a person. But when we say God's a person, then the people who are in the mode of passion and ignorance think he must be a person like you and me and must have a material body and he's suffering and enjoying in so many ways like we do. But that's not the case with Krishna. Krishna was in Vrindavan with the gopis and having his rasa dance. But Krishna was never agitated and it was, uh, his all his activity could be spiritual. He married 16,108 queens in Tuarka. But they all thought that Krishna was their henpecked husband. But Krishna was not attached to any of them. But because he comes and in the material world and descends as a human being, he was playing the role of an ideal householder. So therefore, uh, his wives were thinking Krishna was attached to them. But he wasn't attached to any of them. On this like like normal uh, men and women are. And even the, the rasa dance it has nothing to do with this material world. It's the difference between gold and iron or day and night. It's completely on the spiritual platform. It has nothing to do with sense gratification. So Krishna is the maintainer and he's the creator. He's the creator, maintainer, and destroyer. And he does that through his purusha incarnations, Vishnu, Shiva, and Brahma. And, uh, but Krishna, uh, is the uh, supreme authority. When the demigods are in trouble with the, being attacked by the demons, they go to Krishna for help, or Lord Vishnu, they go to Sweta Dreep, the ocean of milk, with the, they if we go to Brahma, and Brahma goes to Sweta Dreep and prays the Lord for help. But Brahma, even Brahma can't see the Lord, but he hears the Lord. So the Lord says, gives instructions and tells them not to worry, that he will protect the, the demigods. 
So in this way, uh, even though and Lord Shiva is the best of Vaishnavas, so Brahma, Shiva and Vishnu are in charge of the uh, maintenance, creation, maintenance and destruction. But Vishnu is also, uh, is not per anyway contaminated by the material world. He's also above transcendental in pure, pure goodness. He's never uh, influenced by the modes of material nature. And they sent Brigamuni. There were some stages having a conference and they couldn't decide who to worship, Brahma, Vishnu, or Shiva. So because in the Vedas, sometimes it says Shiva is the Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Sometimes it says Brahma is Bhagavan. And, some, and it says Vishnu is Bhagavan. So they were confused. So they deputy, they uh, asked Brigamuni to clear up this doubt. So Brigamuni went to his father, Lord Brahma, and didn't pay obeisances to him, didn't offer respect to him. It said that when uh, we should offer respect to the father or the spiritual master, it is once when we see this father once a day, when we see the spiritual master, we should always offer respects to him. So Brahma, so Brigamuri didn't do that, and Lord Brahma became very, very angry, and but he, he controlled his anger. Then he went to Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva was his brother because they both were born from Brahma's body. But uh, when Lord Shiva went to embrace Brigamuni, he, st he said, no, don't come near me. You are not very clean. You put ashes on your body. You wear skulls. You have ghosts and goblins as your companions. So I don't want you to touch me. So uh, Lord Shiva became very angry, pulled out his trident, was going to kill Brigamuni. But Mother Parvati uh, uh, tried to appease Lord Shiva and stopped him from killing Brigamuni. Then Brigamuni went to Lord Vishnu and in Swetadrip and kicked him in the chest. Now, uh, Lord Vishnu uh, was not disturbed. He apologized to Brigamuni. He said, I'm sorry, you came here, I didn't offer you proper respect, proper honor, and uh, you know, my chest is very hard. I hope you did, didn't hurt your foot. Of course, Brigamuni is described in the uh, Chaitanya Bhagavat that Brigamuni was empowered to do this. On his own, he would never kick Lord Vishnu, being a great sage. But to prove the point that Vishnu was supreme, to all others, he did that. And this way, they came to the conclusion that Lord Vishnu is the Supreme Personality Godhead. But Krishna is the origin of all the Vishnu incarnations. First there comes Vishnu, Krishna, then there comes Balaram, then there comes the chapter Vyuha, then there comes the Vishnu expansions, then there comes the second chapter Vyuha, Shankarshan, uh, Aniruddha, Vasudev, Pradunya. Then comes the Purusha avatars, Karnatakshai Vishnu, uh, Garbhadakshai Vishnu, Kishiratakshai Vishnu. In this way, there are many, many forms of the Lord and incarnations which are coming like the waves in a, in a big lake or ocean. Innumerable incarnations are coming and going. But Krishna is the fountainhead of all the incarnations. And Srila uh, <coughs> Prabhupada, he lectured on this verse in two times, and once in Bombay, 1972, and once in Vrindavan, 1974. And each time he stressed the fact that Krishna is a person. And he quoted from all these different scriptures. We know Srila Prabhupada, um, his favorite song was Hari Hari Vifale. Uh, and it says that I wasted my life willingly drinking poison. But Prabhupada, 
we don't know why that was his favorite song, but um, he spent his life, he was given the order in 1922 by his spiritual master. He had a friend, Prabhupada had a friend, who said that we should go and meet this sadhu. He's a very elevated soul. But Prabhupada had experience in his house when his father would daily invite five sadhus to his house. And so he knew that he never met a sadhu who was actually genuine. Or maybe he did or not, but most of them were not genuine sadhus and could not give any, uh, I did, or he wasn't impressed by any of them. So when his friend said, let's go meet this sadhu, he thought it was just another one of those sadhus. So Prabhupada was reluctant and said, no, I don't want to see him. But somehow he, he went anyhow. So he went to see Bhakti Siddhanta and Bhakti Siddhanta gave him the order that you should, you're a young man, you should preach this Krishna consciousness movement in the English speaking world. So Prabhupada took that as his life and soul, took that instruction as his life and soul. So he didn't waste his human former life willingly drinking poison, but he spent his time studying and he was worded the name Bhaktivedanta, which means he was a scholar, very scholarly even in the Gaudiya Mat before he came to America. So Prabhupada prepared himself uh, to come to America. And when Prabhupada came to America, he had so many room conversations with different scientists and reporters and so many different kinds of people. In Los Angeles, he had a room com conversation with, with some scientists in the garden. So the first thing Prabhupada said you don't know who God is, correct? And so we're saying Krishna is God, so you should take it. So this is Prabhupada, very strong preaching. And when they wanted to incorporate ISKCON, the lawyer said we should call it International Society for God Consciousness. But Prabhupada said, no, I want to call it International Society for Krishna Consciousness because we want to make sure, make it known that God is not some vague conception, but God is a uh, Krishna, which means the all-attractive one. So in this way, uh, Prabhupada uh, preached very vigorously. And because he was uh, equipped with knowledge, Jnana Sakshus, he had the eyes of knowledge, uh, he, gave, he had uh, spoke to so many different kinds of people but he was never defeated. Prabhupada was never defeated by anyone in any conversation. In, no matter who it was, they couldn't defeat Prabhupada. When Prabhupada went to Dr. Mizra's ashram, he was a Mayavadi. And when Prabhupada spoke a few times, Dr. Mizra wouldn't let him speak anymore because he couldn't understand what Prabhupada was saying. So, Prabhupada uh, went, had to move to a different place and gradually he developed the International Society for Krishna Consciousness and gained followers. So this, what's staying here um, that is explained that it's like a tree, like a silent tree. Krishna expands it, like the roots of a tree expand everywhere. So Krishna is there in his planet Kolok Vrindavan and by his energy the uh, whole creation is manifested. But uh, those who people are not devoted and not engaged in Krishna consciousness cannot understand this fact. Krishna says he's the overseer and the per permitter and he reserves the right to be known. So this way Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Chaturmita. We're reading in the morning prayers by uh, or the uh, story of Tritiketu. Tritiketu was flying in his airplane and he saw Lord Shiva, who's the best of all Vaishnavas, sitting in assembly with his wife Parvati on his lap. 
So there are, so JTK2 uh, kind of had a slip of the tongue, which he was called that. He said, out loud, he, he said that this is very amazing. The Lord Shiva was sitting with his wife in the assembly of so many sadhus. Of course, he was just speaking out of amazement. He wasn't trying to blaspheme Lord Shiva. But, uh, so, Mother Parvati, she didn't understand his intentions, but Lord Shiva did, but he didn't say anything. So Mother Parvati cursed, cursed uh, Chittiketu to take birth in a demoniac family as a demon. And Chittiketu uh, is describing the uh, nature of this material world and uh, so many things there in the six canons of Shiva Bhagavatam. But he was a very knowledgeable person. He had the darshan of Lord Shankarshan. So he was actually Nichasira, liberated soul. And that curse by Mother Parvati was not uh, unfavorable. It was a benediction because by getting cursed, he took a demon body and then from that demon body, he, be, he was killed by Indra and went back home, back to Godhead. So it was speed up his back, going back home, back to Godhead. So here uh, is the, we have to uh, care about Krishna. Shravanam, uh, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam. Nine processes of devotional service. Hearing is the most important. In the schools they teach that seeing is the most important way to the best way to learn, but we don't agree with that. It's by hearing. Hearing is the best way to learn spiritual knowledge. Maybe seeing may be the best way to learn material knowledge, but hearing is the best way to uh, assimilate spiritual knowledge. So uh, we can hear from Srila Prabhupada by listening to his lectures. We can hear from the other devotees by attending the Bhagavad Gita class or the Srimad Bhagavatam class. Uh, we can also hear different kirtans and these things are purifying and nourish our bhakti. And the whole thing is that we should uh, perform devotional service Savai Pumsa Puro Dharma Yato Bhakti Rahokshide Haitiki Pratyata Yenatma Supersidati the host and service should be unmotivated and uninterrupted. In this way, one can perform pure devotional service. So we should try to uh, practice devotional service with great care and attention, uh, attend all the programs as much as possible, take advantage of listen, living in the Holy Dham. Vrindavan Dham is not meant for sense gratification. It's not meant for uh, high-rise apartments so people can live a comfortable spiritual life. The uh, people who are doing these things, they don't have any understanding. Of, they think Vrindavan is just an ordinary place. But Vrindavan is meant for bhajan, meant for uh, people who are serious about spiritual life. So this is the month of Kartik, and the month of Kartik it's special that we celebrate the month of Kartik all over the world. But in Vrindavan, it's special. Because in Vrindavan, whatever devotional service you perform, you get a hundred times the benefit. But in Kartik, you get a thousand times the benefit. Some people say 10,000. But whatever it is, you get totally much more benefit by spending your time in Vrindavan than in the month of Kartik. And it says in nectar devotion, that if one is not a serious devotee, but if he comes to Vrindavan in the month of Kartik and follows the principles very carefully, then he can attain the service of Krishna after this life. So that is the special concession of Kartik Mas, Kartik month. So we should try to. Uh, do some extra chanting, uh, minimize our eating and sleeping, 
minimize our sense gratification in the month of Kartik. And at the end of Kartik, there's Bhishma Panchika, which is five days, which uh, some people follow. It's very strict austerity. Either you can follow it by uh, not take, only taking air, or you can follow it by only drinking water, or you can follow it by taking Ikadasi Prasadam once a day, if you want to follow this Bhishma Panchika. And if you do that, then you get the benefit of all, all four months of Chaturmasha. So it's, but this is a preaching movement. So, and if you can't follow that, if it's too difficult, then you can't continue your service or it's dangerous to your health, then you shouldn't do Bhishma Panchika. But if you're healthy and young and you're strong and you want to perform some austerity, then you can do it. But Prabhupada didn't stress that so much. So anyway, this verse uh, is saying that, O oh, conquer wealth, there's no truth superior to me. Everything rests upon me as pearls strung on a thread. So we should not have any doubt. I think that uh, there can be that God is not a person and we cannot develop our love for God. This is the, uh, when Lord Chaitanya came to teach uh, Prema Bhakti, he came, but no other incarnation came to give. Rupa Goswami said, what did he say? He said, Mo Mahavana Daya, Krishna Prabhupada, Krishna, Krishna, Shaitanya, Mo Gurta, Saina Maha. That the most munificent or merciful incarnation of the Lord is Lord Chaitanya, because he came to give what no other incarnation gives. When Krishna came, he said, Sarva Dharma Prikshita, surrender unto me, give up all varieties of religious. But when Lord Chaitanya came, he came to give prema bhakti, purely, without any uh, consideration. So, Lord Chaitanya had a storehouse of love of God, and he distributed that to every man, woman, and child, wherever he, wherever he went. So we're very fortunate that we can be in Vrindavan, in Kartik, and we can <coughs> worship the deities of Gornitai, Krishnabhava, Radha, Shama, Sundar, and we can <coughs> uh, read, read, read Prabhupada's books. We should try to study Prabhupada's books as much as possible, all of Prabhupada's books, and um, be very knowledgeable. So we'll also not be defeated by anyone. Prabhupada said we should be like a lawyer. When they turned at the Prabhupada and said, we're reading your books, Prabhupada. Prabhupada wasn't, said, no, you should study my books. You should be like a lawyer. When a lawyer goes to court, he's a good lawyer. He can cite, cite other cases to, to prove his case. So we should also be like a lawyer and uh, learn the important slokas in these different books so when we preach to people, we can, will not be uh, defeated in any way and not be uh, confused in any way about whether Krishna is the Supreme Personality or Godhead or not. So that's all I have to say about this verse and purport. There's many things more to say. We have any comments or questions? Question man is here. I thought you didn't come tonight. Question man. Microphone. Is there a microphone for the question man? No microphone? Anybody else have a question? Then he said, every day 
in my house there were many sadhus are coming. So when many sadhus were coming to his house, that time Prabhupada was not interested in those sadhus because uh, was not what? Prabhupada was not what? Interested in those sadhus. So he, he, he was not interested in those sadhus who were coming in his house. Yes. Then his friend told him this is sadhu, this is different, so you come and meet him. So means that means uh, Prabhupada's father he used to entertain or uh, anybody, any type of person who used to come to him. Yeah, and Prabhupada's father didn't discriminate. Householder's duty is to feed people, distribute prasadam. If anyone was dressed like a sadhu, wearing saffron cloth, we allow them to take prasadam. But I, I, I don't know, Prabhupada's father was a pure devotee, so he may, may or may not have conversed with them. They just came and took prasadam and went away. So Prabhupada's father didn't discriminate, but Prabhupada wasn't impressed by them. Maybe there was a few that were Gaudiya Vaishnavas, but generally they were um, just dressed as a sannyasi to fill their belly. They were pseudo sannyasis. Usually sannyasis go to priests uh, priest, uh, uh, in their house. They go for preaching purpose. So these sadhus were coming for preaching purpose or uh, only filling up their belly? What? The sadhus, sannyasis are supposed to go to Grasta and preach them. So they preach Krishna consciousness or they preach something, different things to the Grastas, the sadhus who, who are coming to Prabhupada's house. So they were preaching, uh, they used to come for preaching purpose or they just come to visit them and take prasad and just go away. Well, I wasn't there, I can't tell you. <laughs> but generally, they just came and took prasadam and went away. I don't know. But Prabhupada's father was a pure devotee, so he couldn't be swayed by any Mayavadi's philosophy. Generally, they were Mayavadi. But I, I'm not, I wasn't there, so you'd have to ask someone who was there or someone that and hear it from Prabhupada. Anybody else? All right. Srila Prabhupada Kijai, Bhagavad Gita Kijai.